Hello, it's Uncle from TacticalGamer.com here again with another mission editing tutorial. Uh, some questions I've been getting about how do you spawn in your own custom AI. Now, in this case, I did use only vanilla units um, just because it makes it simple. But uh, basically, I've got four spawn points around here um, that are spawning in AI. And I can do it either off my radio menu, uh, as you can see here, um, zero zero one spawn AI groups and will automatically run my script give me a little sound just because I use that for debugging if I go back into my Zeus I can see that I will now have another AI group that got spawned in um, so let's run over how we're gonna set this up uh, there's my group there and in a minute it'll get added to my curator and how did we do all this uh, and how can you use it in your missions Okay, so the start of this mission is that I've just placed down one playable unit, uh, squad leader. All right, I have now created um, four markers. Okay, um, here they are. Markers spawn here. So I created a marker type of a system, empty marker, which doesn't show up for anybody. Uh, and I placed one here and I copied it and that's how it automatically names the next ones when you copy and paste. So there's four markers. Um, let's see where they are. And then they are. What's going to happen is I'm going to use a radio trigger. Press zero, zero, uh, 001 in order to activate a radio alpha which was just going to call a script that's going to choose one of these four locations at random, spawn in an enemy group, and then we're going to give them some uh, behavior, some waypoints. We're going to use a function for that. So let's take a quick look at the uh, trigger. So the text is going to be what shows up in my um, radio menu as a description of what that uh, will do. Uh, it's a radio alpha trigger, it's repeatable, and it's going to execute a script spawn AI group that I've written and we will be working with. So let's take a look now at that script. Okay, so now we're looking at the script itself. I'm going to walk through the commands, um, hopefully rather quickly here. Um, the first thing that we want to do is the trigger, the radio trigger, even though I'm the only one client, let's say it's connected to the server that actually hit the trigger. The way those triggers work is as if everybody hit the button, right? Because the code will be executed on every connected client and the server. I only want to spawn AI on the server, so I'm going to make sure that anybody that's not the server, which is exclamation is not, so if not is server, exit with executing any code that you put in between here, and I don't have any code. You know, I could say, System chat, you're not the server. But that would be silly. So really, I just wanted to not run this script unless it's a server. So this is a good line to throw in any server side scripts that you want to have run. It's always a good thing to just throw this in there at the beginning of it because no matter who calls it, um, no matter how it gets executed, it, it just make sure that it won't run except for on the server itself. The next thing I'm going to do is going to create a variable for spawn points. Okay, so uh, I'm going to store all those markers that we put in the mission. Okay, marker spawn, marker spawn underscore one, two, and three. All right, are going to be stored in an array. All right, uh, I'm assuming that we you've already seen the videos about uh, some basic scripts uh, theories such as like uh, what an array is. Uh, what a string is, that sort of thing. Uh, but I have videos on that uh, to help you out if you're not understanding what this array is. And I've also put down an array of class names um, that are the units that we're going to spawn in. So I'll switch over in the video here now and show you where I went and got these class names from. How I got these class names was just simply by going to the here, and I moused over, okay, what's the 
um, class name for the squad leader. It pops up as you can see, and it says O Soldier SL underscore F, right? So that's how I got these class names, and I just copied them down and put them into this array. Basically, uh, there was no way to copy and paste them, so I just looked at them and then typed them in this window, went over, looked at the next one, and typed it in here into this array. So I got a list of units that could be in our group. All right, now back to the next point. I'm going to choose one of these spawn positions at random. So I'm going to choose one of the elements out of this array at random. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is, let's say if I had spawn points, I'm going to store it in a place called spawn marker. I just decided to make that up random. So it's going to choose one of the spawn points, select. Now the way this works is, is if I replace all this with just zero, just the number zero, this is the zero element of the array. Elements are numbered with an index uh, in any array, zero, one, two, three, and so forth, as many as there is elements in the array. All right, so if I go select one, I'm going to select that element of the array. That's the zero, and that's the two. Simple enough. So what I'm going to do with the rest of this code here is, first of all, the first thing it's going to execute is the deepest nest of uh, parentheses here, which is count the number of elements in spawn points. So I'm going to count, and there's four elements. So now it's going to create a random number based on that count. So it's going to be random four, all right? <clears throat> and it's going to then choose floor, which basically means choose a, an integer. So it's going to choose now four uh, possible values, all right? And it's going to be zero, one, two, or three, because random always starts at zero, which is great because so does our element. So I don't need to do anything funny to deal with that. So it's going to choose at random a maximum of uh, from a zero to a three of four elements and then return that. So that's as simple as it is. Anyway, moving on. I'm going to then just store my spawn position into another variable because I'm going to get that marker position and it's going to store it. A marker array actually doesn't have the Z coordinate. It only has an X and a Y. All right, so I believe, I don't know if this is automatically going to put in a comma zero for the height coordinate, but however, I did get an error message if I tried to put get spawn or get marker position here uh, in my create unit. So I just stored it here and I got rid of my error. So I'm not sure exactly why that was, but it doesn't matter to me. Um, now you're going to create a group because in order to place units into a group, the group needs to be created. Now this is quite abstract, right? It's not as if there's, there's no physical group that was created or, you know, actual entity. It's like another, it's hard to explain, but uh, I'm going to create a new group, call it new group. It's going to be from the east side because in this mission, my enemy is of the east side or off four side. And the next element is whether or not you want to delete the group if all the units are dead or have been deleted. And I think Armor 3 does that automatically now, but uh, I still said true because I don't want extra groups laying around if they're not being used. So now we've got in a group that we can put our units in. The next part of this command is I could just run it like that. This would actually probably make more sense. So for I'm going to create a class name of the squad leader for the op4, right? So an op4 squad leader. We're going to create that unit. And holy cow. Okay, that's a little bit better. Um, I have to pass to the create unit the position that we're going to create the unit at, what group they're going to be in. And then I just executed this code in there too so that um, because create unit doesn't return back uh, what unit it actually created, which I had here before. Um, if I undo, right, I had this in there before, new leader, right, and it would then spawn that in there uh, or return that. Uh, so it doesn't do that. So that is the reason why I had to um, 
with this new leader equals this. So I could refer to this new leader. Let's say if I wanted to create that unit, you give it a second, right, to have spawned in before you try to do anything with it. And at that point now, I could say if I wanted to add a GPS unit to it or something like that, I could go new leader, add item, item, GPS. Right, and now he would have an item GPS, right, because I can refer to him by that name now because I assigned him that name. Anyway, that's how that works uh, with the create unit command. That's why I've done that. All right, now we're going to do a for each loop. And again, this is uh, something that I've covered in some of the scripting basics videos, but I'll hit it again here just uh, so you understand how this works. A for each loop is going to go, say, for each units in this group, which is an array. So for each of these elements in this array, it's going to execute the code between these curly brackets. So the first time it gets into these this code, it's going to go grab the first element out of the units and group. Okay, and it's going to substitute it for the variable underscore x. So it's going to create the sold the GL soldier here, and it's going to create it at the uncle spawn position, add it to that our group and say new unit equals this. So again, if for a second, if I wanted to give it a GPS or put a flashlight on its rifle or anything like that, I could do it here and it, do it by referring to it as new unit. All right, and this, this for each loop is going to grab the second element of the array and create the soldier. All right, and it's gonna soldier light, create that, and on through. And this version of the script is basically gonna fill up every squad with every one of these units. We'll leave it at that for now. Now we've got our entire group created, uh, and they will all report to our squad leader. And now we need to tell them to do something. So we're going to give them a patrol point. Now I put an invisible helipad in the center of our town, and I named it patrol center in the um, editor. The BIS function task patrol is going to pass what group are we giving this uh, these uh, new waypoints two, so that is our group. What's the center point that they're going to patrol around? Well, it's get position patrol center. So I'm returning the center of the town. And then I could put a, just an XYZ coordinate in there, right? And that would work just fine. I just find it easier that if I wanted to move their center point around, I put something in the editor and name it patrol center. That way I can easily visually grab it and drag it and move their positions around as needed in the editor. Um, so I do it this way. The 50 here is the maximum uh, distance between each one of their waypoints. So they will go to the center of town and then start patrolling around with a maximum distance of 50 meters between any of their waypoints. So they can get out further than 50 meters from the patrol center, but their maximum distance of waypoints are going to be uh, 50 meters. Um, and I'm not sure, but they, you know, this task patrol is quite well written. Uh, they won't go like 50 meters and then another 50 meters out, and another 50 meters out until they're like two kilometers out. They will roughly patrol around that center, but 50 meters away. Uh, so they can spread out quite a little way. So like, they'll be out 200 meters sometimes from the patrol center, which is great. All right, so sleep for, and I just then set the group behavior to combat. So it speeds them up so they not just coming in and sauntering around because you know it's, it's so silly when you've got AI spawning in and you are already in a firefight but they'll just come sauntering on by and you know their buddies might be getting shot up but they don't really seem to care too much at least they look like they're in the middle of a combat so there we go that's the script um, let's get back into how we're going to call it because now we just need to execute this script once and it will populate some AI now how if we take care of those AI and we dispense with them and we want to create another group. I'm just going to do that with just a simple trigger in the editor for now. Later videos will come back and I'll show you how more we can actually get more complex behaviors out of this script now by controlling how often it spawns in, whether it spawns uh, units based on the number of players that are on the server or if you want some waves to come in quite close on each other's heels and then you want it to let up for a while and then give the players a chance to rearm and then another quick and intense wave come in. There's all sorts of ways we can control it, but this is step one, is getting just the AI to come in.
All right, I could just as easily have a trigger to control the AI here. Um, let's make it rather large. Um, let's make it by 600 by 600. I think that should encompass this area. Activated by op floor present. It's repeatable and it's server only. So the condition of the trigger is this, which means that op floor is present and it's repeatable. And I'm going to say and count this list is less than or equal to let's say four. So once there's four or less enemy units present in this area, then we're going to just basically execute that script again and spawn in AI. So this will automatically do it for us. Um, execute VM, what did I call it? Spawn AI group dot SQF. And that will mean that we will continuously have at least four AI in this group. As soon as there isn't, it will spawn in some more. So anytime there's less than four or less up four units in this big circle, then it'll spawn in some more. So I'm going to name the trigger just so I... I name it so I know what that trigger is there to do. Okay, let's give that a shot. Now this would work. So I needed at least one in there to get this that uh, ball rolling or activate that trigger in the first place. So now we'll have one group here somewhere. There they are. Holy cow, look at them all. And they're coming in. Okay, so if I delete this group. That should get us below the threshold. And then we should have another group created automatically by our trigger. And there it was. And they'll come in, let's say. So I delete them. What have we got? One, two, three, four. That should trigger another group now that we've got four or less. And there they are. So continuous reinforcements into the town. And we've got a sustainable mission. All right. So keep the action up. Spawn in some AI now and then. I um, mean, it's not the only way to populate a mission, but this can add a really nice, easy way to add some dynamic content um, so that you've always got something going on for the players in your missions. So this is Uncle from TacticalGamer.com. Uh, please hit subscribe if you uh, find this video useful and share it with your friends. Um, and go out there and make some great missions. Uh, if you have questions, put them down there in the comments and uh, I try to get to them as much as possible. Obviously, uh, you know, real life has got me doing other things, but I'm glad to help out as much as I can because uh, Arma is pretty awesome. So I like to share what I know and uh, like to play your missions. Oh, wait. Ciao for now.